Amen. Awesome, guys. Thanks for worshiping. Yeah. Um, kiddos, you have a seat as well. And let's welcome up Ethan. He's going to bring the word today. Woo! It's going to be awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming. Uh, since Aaron dismissed the kids, I just want to say that was amazing worship. I absolutely love it. It's something that warms my heart. That is where my heart is at with this worship. Uh, so that was just amazing. Um, how's everybody doing? Everybody good? Have a good week? Have fun? Yeah, good week? Enjoying the weather? Enjoying the thunderstorms that we had? I thought those were cool. Lightning and thunder and all that good stuff. Flooding. That was fun. Um, hello to everybody online. Uh, thank you for joining. I hope you guys enjoy this message as we get through this. I want to introduce myself as Aaron just did. My name is Ethan. Um, I am one of the intern pastor here hopefully becoming a pastor I, I, I think this is like my second interview process my first one was back in May um, so maybe there might be one more interview and then I might be a full-on pastor um, yeah. we'll see I'm hoping so um, but it is truly an honor I wanted to thank Nick and Aaron for uh, letting me uh, preach up there up to you guys um, and let me speak about what you were speaking to me you were truly an honor and Trent Willis and I want to thank you um, so to start off, uh, we're in the book of Luke. We're going to be in the book of Luke for a long, long time. It's an amazing book. Um, and so there's just a couple questions that I want to start off with. Um, the chapters that we are in, are in uh, we're in chapter 8, so we're going to go through 4 through 15. We're going to go through 4 through 15. And this is one of the first parables, or one of the bigger parables that Jesus first starts with. And I just have to ask you a couple questions before we get started, just as um, How's the soil? Is it dry? Is it rocky? Is it, is it weedy? Or is it fertile and ready for seed? So this is what I kind of want to go through. And the other question I have is, is, is how deceptive are you as a seed sower? How are you deceived about your seed? So I wanted to just like get that in your guys' heads when we when we go through these verses, just be thinking about it. You know, where's my heart? Where, where can I, where can I go in deeper with this thing? As we go through these parables, Jesus taught a lot of parables, and they seem to show, as I said before, um, deceit. So why did Jesus keep some parables? And this is what I kind of think. There's two main purposes of Jesus teaching in parables or using parables. The first is a purpose to reveal the truth to his disciples. The second purpose is to veil the truth to those who the reader will not believe. That reminds me of a story that when um, it's in chapter, it's in Luke chapter 24, when um, Jesus is walking with his disciples. It doesn't say who the disciples were, but they were walking to a city of Emmaus, I believe, Emmaus. Um, anyways, he blinded their eyes so they couldn't recognize it just made me think of like um, Jesus is opening the disciples' eyes to see or to hear these parables, but blinding the eyes of the Pharisees to those people that don't, those people that just don't believe. Um, as we see in just a little bit, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, like I just said, the disciples are being able to see the kingdom of God in the secret, um, in the secret that God has given them or that Jesus has given them. Some say that a parable is a earthly story with heavenly meaning. From what I found in the study of the verses, uh, there were four, four parables in the first seven chapters. And after chapter seven, after chapter eight, there's only two more. So we're going to be looking for a lot of parables this afternoon. So the way I'm going to do this is we're gonna, I'm going to go through and I'm going to break it up into two parts. So I think there's, there's really two sections. Um, I'm going to read verses 4 through 10, and we're going to kind of talk about it, and then we're going to read through 11 through 15, and we'll just see what Jesus says about it. So, Father God, we just thank you. Thank you, God, that you're here, Father. Thank you for your giving all the way. Open our eyes. Open our hearts. We let them see you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, let's start in verse 8, or chapter 8. 
verse 4, it says, And when a great crowd gathered, and people from town to town came to hear, he said in a parable, A sower went out and sowed his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rocky ground and grew up, and it withered away because it had no moisture. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it out, and it choked the plants up. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. And some of these, to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others, there are, they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they might not hear. So when I read that last verse, or fantastic quote, or in verse 10, I was a, a little confused, so I'm hoping I can bring some clarity to that part of the, the scripture too. But let's go back to the first uh, verse four, and we'll kind of go through it, just kind of walk through um, what I feel like Jesus is speaking to each of these. Sorry, I keep going. And it says, um, um, when a great crowd gathered, and the people from the town to town came to hear him, he said in a parable. Um, Jesus has been drawing more and more attention to himself, to his being, to his teachings. People have been attracted to him of the light who he is and how he's been living, living in his life. Some of them wasn't, wasn't good, in fact. Some, some of the Pharisees were trying to catch him, trying to get him in his bag of, of teaching and they were out for him. In a book that I was uh, trying to do some studying on here, uh, The Harmony of the Gospel, and it says, it says that this is the start of a new phase of the Lord's teaching as a teaching tool parables enable him to continue instructing his disciples without giving the women unnecessary opportunity to catch him in his words. Or catch him in his words. Or I was like in his words. So let's go into the parable of the sower. A sower went out and he sowed his seed. And he, as he sowed, some fell along the path and trampled underfoot. And the bird of the air devoured it. Has anyone ever been in that in your life? It feels like you're in huge seed that it's too far too hard to to take it in yeah me too funny <laughs> um how many times have you heard a good teaching or 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 a good sermon and you're, you're kind of on fire but then you know maybe the next day that early morning or or, or that even that even that evening you know the devil, devil comes in and just starts taking that word away just starts taking that word that you're trying to you know impart your heart again how's your heart trampled on, hard to receive the word of the Lord. You know, and the, the, the other parable, this, this, this second one is um, the seed falls on rocky ground and it says, and some of it, some fell on rock and it grew up, but it withered away because it had no moisture. I can remember a time, do you remember a time when you were um, kind of fell on the rocky ground? Or when we received the word and it never took root because our soil our heart was not filled. <laughs> the soil wasn't deep enough or we didn't have enough moisture to see the water or taste the, the root that was in the soil. So we turn back to our fleshly ways, ways that are comfortable to us to, to go back to this worldly living. And we forget that, that all he needs, all he wants is us to receive his word. Have a softened um, in John sixteen thirty two, it says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation, or tribulation. but take heart, I have overcome, overcome the world. So just know that when our, our seed does fall on rocky ground, that it may, we may be just jacked up and be excited When it withers away, we're going to have hard times, and we need to remember what we need to fall back on. And then 
verse 7, it says, Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and it choked out its roots. Choked its roots. I don't want to say choked. <laughs> um, when I was doing the study, I was listening to a sermon, and this guy was a MMA fighter, or a jiu-jitsu, I can't remember which one, but he was a fighter. But he said, it, um, you don't always know when you're getting choked out until the lights start going out. And it's like, that's kind of the truth. What are the weeds that we have around us? Does our certain soil cling to things? If not, they'll eventually come and choke us out. See, I had some weeds. I probably still have some more weeds. You guys are going to have to grow those things up. But when COVID hit, it really showed me what my weeds were. I was a huge sports fan, a huge sports guy. And COVID hit right in March. March Madness was my favorite time of the year. Basketball. I love basketball. And I just remember being like, they shut it down. You know, no more, no more live sports. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do? This is dumb. I can't watch reruns. I can't watch. I already know who wins the sport, so I can't watch it. And God's like, well, why don't you get in my word? Oh, God. That was pretty convicting. <laughs> so that's what I started to do, was to study his word. So what type of soil are you? Where's your heart? Is it full of weeds? Is it not able to fully surrender all to the Lord? Are you still holding on to the flesh, fleshly desires again of this world? In Jeremiah 4, 3, it says, For this said the Lord, the man of Judah, Judah and Jerusalem, break up your hollow ground and play not among thorns. So let's remember what we, what we take in. What we take in is what we're going to reap, what we're going we're gonna to sow out of these. The desires of your heart are going to show more. So if we're full of God, we're full of his love. That's going to show out to others. For anything that is kept from us, from receiving the super seed, needs to be removed and discarded. And Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 3, 6. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. And then we have some of the seed that falls onto good soil and yields a hundredfold. And he said these things, or he called out. Jesus called out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. Some hear the word, the seed, and even when hard times come, they still stand firm in the core. You know, the devil's plan is to lie, kill, steal, and destroy. He is going to do everything in his earthly in his power to persuade us from the love of God, from following God, and calling all in on him. But sometimes the plan works. Sometimes his plan works. Sometimes he pulls us. He's able to pull us away. But if our soil is fertile and ready to receive his word, it will be a lot harder for the devil to pursue and tempt us. This, this scripture is one of my favorite in the Bible. He who has ears, let him hear. And that saying in the Bible is found, in thir- and I found it in 13 times. Six in the Synoptic Gospels, which is Matt, Mark, Matt, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and seven in the book of Revelation. And those were all to each one of his churches. So he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And in verse nine, when, when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, this, this verse 10 just kind of threw me for a loop. I couldn't, I, I cannot, couldn't understand it. And it says, he, he said to those who have been given the knowledge of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they might not hear. So how blessed are those who did not, or who do understand the parables of Jesus? Not only do they gain the benefits of the spiritual truth, uh, truth illustration, they also display measured of respons- responsiveness to the Holy Spirit. I did the search in Matthew in the same verses, and I, I, thought, I thought Matthew explained it a little bit better, so I wanted to read through that in Matthew. And that's Matthew 13, 11 through 16. And it says, And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has more will be given, and he has an abundance. 
but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is filled, that said, is fulfilled, that says, you will indeed hear and never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For the people's heart have grown dull, and their eyes they can barely hear, or they can, and their ears can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed. Least this should see with their eyes and ears, with their and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say, you may, you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see, and to hear what you did not, what you hear, and did not, not hear it. That was, <laughs> that was a lot of Matthew, but I loved how Jesus always goes back to old prophecy whenever he's teaching or, or speaking in parables. So I wanted to go back and find it in Isaiah, and it is in Isaiah 6, in verse 10, and it says, make his heart the people of, uh, make the heart of the people dull, and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and and turn and be healed. Hmm. That verse uh, that we went through, Those verses that I went through was was my interpretation of these verses. There's no better word than the word of God. I'm human. I'm going to muddy it up. I'm going to have my own perspective on, on these verses and thoughts. But in, in verses 11 through fi- uh, yeah, 15, this is what Jesus says with, and, and how he explains these, these parables to his disciples. And it says 11. Now this parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The one along the path are those who heard, who have heard. The devil comes, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their ears so that they may not believe and be saved. And the one in the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but they have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, they fall away. And as for, the, for what uh, falls among thorns, are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and its fruit does not mature. In verse 15, as for that, um, as for that in the good soil, those are those who hear, hearing the word, hold fast to it in honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Take that big, huge word, and that one is patience. There's a lot of times when when I need to, I want to do it my way, <laughs> that I that I want this fruit, and I want the soil to be turned quicker. But I think, you know, God always uses a little soil to kind of messes things up a little bit to make it nice again. Um, I hope that everyone understands that the seed is the word of God. If you miss the seed, you miss the whole parable. If, if you see the seed represent money, you miss the parable. If you see the, see the seed, if you think the seed is represent love, you miss the parable. If you think the seed represents hard work, you miss this parable. We can only understand it by understanding the seed. The seed is the word of God. Um, Spurgeon, I think it was Charles Spurgeon, right? Um, he said, "This preacher of the preacher of the gospel is like the sower. We did not make his seed; it is given by him, his divine master. No one could create the smallest grain that ever grew up on the earth, up upon the earth, much less the holy seed of eternal life." In Mark, when he starts this parable, he yells out, "Listen!" just reminds me of whoever has ears let them hear 
Why do you think Jesus told this parable? Is he the talker of our hearts? Or who has ears to, ears to hear, let them hear. Maybe just how we are to receive the parable. What, what changed your heart to receive the, the word of God? And there's no better word to tell other than the word of God to remove any hardened part of your heart. Uh, I've prayed this prayer for a couple of years now. Uh, a couple different prayers, and I'll touch you on both of you. One is change my heart to show people, show me how you love people. Soften my heart. I think in Matthew 4 it says, I will replace this heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I've asked that a couple times. And the other one is to, to break my heart to break yours. And that's a hard one. And that hurts. And you see a lot of people with very, very hurt, very, very hardened hearts, very, very, very rocky hearts. Mm. I believe uh, God will show what type of soil you are. All in all, he just wants to be that fertile soil. But during the process of tilling the soil, you will need to be okay with realizing the soil that needs to be removed and continue and removing and continuing it to make the soil ready to receive his word. But what about the sower? Never skip, he, he never skipped the, the, the soil that was hardened. He never skipped the soil that was rocky. So we as Christ followers should never skip the soil that is hardened or rocky. We are the gospel. <laughs> we are to speak the gospel to others. The gospel is our fertilizer. The Holy Spirit's our water. And God's our light to shine on earth. We need, we need all three to complete this soil. Are we living in such a way dependent upon God? That we cannot go day a day without him filling our hearts. There is another verse in here, James, or another uh, guy that wrote a verse in here, James, James, age of 18. And it says, figure out what we love the most and try to make that be Jesus. Well, again, this went by a lot faster than I thought, so I'm going to get out a little bit early. But I have some a couple questions just for you guys. We are all type of soil. What type are you? What's your heart? Have we trust Jesus to fill our hearts so that we so that our soil will be fertile fertile ground and ready to sow our seed? That's what I just pray for all of us today through this time of just like show us where our hearts are. Show us where our soil's at. What do we what do we need to grow to show? What do we need to leave behind at the feet of Jesus? I just pray this. Father God, we just thank you for this time. God, we thank you for <laughs> the quick twitch sermon. Father, I thank you for speaking to the people that needed to hear it. Father, most of all, I thank you for opening my eyes to see what I need to replace this fertile soil. Father God, I pray that each one of us receive this word and understand these parables. That with a heart that is rocky, with a heart that is hardened, that we've been stepped on, may we have trust issues. God, I ask that you come and fill our hearts. Remove these, this spirit of evil. Remove these hardened soils. Let us have fertile ground in us. Let us have fertile hearts to share your word. And let us not miss anybody that needs to hear the gospel. Lord, it is your honor. It is our honor to praise you. It is our honor to give us time to come together. God, I pray that we glorify you and give you all the praise.
Justin did obviously not do a great night. He and Chelsea are in Portland. Um, Chelsea missed the Cubs game to pass the Braves. Before we do that, we just really want what we what Nick and I really truly want is we want to say thanks to our host community, and you know we we all are gonna come to this as a you know as self evaluation, but at the same time as we are proud to celebrate all five of our favorite players. But really, it's just like you know what we want to do is we want to discuss simplicity. want to say we thank God that we did it with an old Christian community and really like we went to Burbank and we kind of you know believe like from I think this is a collective group of like friends and so yeah so you know we want to create a space for everyone to step up in that creative moment you know no one gets like you know what you get to as long as you step out in faith that's that faith that works you know we want to see the Lord in all want to be used, and we want to see miracles, and we want to see an experience happen here and now. I've experienced God plenty of times, but like right now, talking about soil, there's soil like here, right now, fresh soil, and we can't expect to see anything grow out of that soil until now, right? So it's like, let's go ahead and start with our hearts, and you know, maybe I'm praying that Even if I come out flat on my face like I did this morning, um, I really, uh, I really feel like, like as we continue on, we really, no one's finished and I don't want anyone to be left in a place of just like feeling a lot of anguish because of frustration. And um, so yeah, so you know, um, let the fifth round of Burning Bridges be for us. Let's go do a little bit of worship prayer night where we can get together. Really, there's no agenda other than like our community and to connect with each other and spend time in prayer and find out exactly what is going on in the heart of um, the hungry for it, to see when the world is broken. Or maybe you felt angered by, you know, um, government or, you know, the entertainment industry and all these different things that are just always in front of us in life. We would love to pray with you, you know? We, I mean, if we don't pray and if we're not specific with our prayers, we can't really expect to see what's going on in the heart of people, you know? And that's, that's, I want to put God in a box and just say, I don't even want to hear specific prayer requests right now. Um, yeah, can we just lift up Nick and Chelsea and Chelsea Green? Uh, Father, thank you so much for the faithfulness of Nick and his, uh, his, his calling that you placed in his life. And God, for giving him an incredibly faithful and wonderful wife and blessing him with a son. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would bless them and you give them, God, the, the mercies and the, the blessings on their way back to Portland. I pray, God, that you would bless him as he, uh, as he's, you know, in a place where there's, where there's mourning. Um, but, Lord, I just would just, Holy Spirit, would just free you to speak into that place. Um, to bring restoration, to bring joy, joy of memories and, um, and comfort in that place. And I pray for anybody that needs comfort in this, in this house right now would receive it. I pray that, um, Father, that you would steady our wills, that you would, that you would fully and do greater works in restoration in our hearts and in our minds. And I just thank you, Jesus, that we don't have to earn our way into your good graces or into your pleasures, but that we simply get to be yours. So I just want to pray for every church in the world right now, every believer, that you would um, re-inspire us, that, that this this love connection between us would fully be restored, would be impacted, that we would 
live from your love and not for it. Um, yeah, God, that just your entire body, not just grassroots revival, but like every church in this valley um, and every church in every state and every country from the underground churches to, the, to, the, to those of us who can speak freely about Jesus but choose not to. I just pray that there's this, this true hunger to just see everybody come into your presence. Lord, the only, Father, the only way we're going to do that is by being personally impacted, is by receiving a personal revelation either of your power or your affections or your love for the earth or, or a word, a fresh word um, from you. Or even just as Ethan was saying, that that seed that is sown, that, that, that your, you, the words from your word would jump off the pages. We just call on the Bible to come alive that the Bible would fully come alive in our lives, that we could just take a small taste and then receive this great impact that fully nourishes and fulfills our minds and fulfills our hearts and just keeps us coming back for more. I just pray that there would just be this, this consistency and simplicity. No, I don't have to earn the Lord's affections, but I just want to be with him because he wants to be with me. I love him because he first loved me. I pray that 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 would totally impact your entire church body, the entire, your entire bride, Jesus, that we would all come into alignment with, with your, your heart for the world. And um, I just thank you for your restoration. I thank you for this family. I thank you for these friends. I pray that, um, that there would be, well, God, I just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you for the connections that you're making here. I thank you, Father, when I, when I think of grassroots, I think of my family. I think of my daughter. And I think about how, you know, if I don't do anything else in the world, at the very least, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping out to create a place where my daughter can have long-lasting relationships that constantly point her back to you, Jesus. That's the, literally the most important thing is that every relationship in this house points us right back to you. That we're, that we're united in Christ. That no matter what differences we have, we are all under the same covering. Your presence, your righteousness, your favor, your love for us, we're so different. The things that make us angry, triggers, the things that make us excited, that give us joy, it's so different, Lord. But Jesus, you're the one thing that can bring all these different people together. So we say yes to you. None of us, if we don't ever understand each other, I pray that you would increase the connection between us in Jesus' name. And that... Um, that we would be a wonderful representation to our town and our communities as the bride of Christ. As lovers of Jesus, very simple, but so powerful. And that we would represent the beauty of heaven. That we would represent the fragrance of heaven. And that we would see impact and be filled with even more excitement to see more. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cool, you guys.